In this video, we're going to talk about two-dimensional steady state conduction, and we'll do an overview of the ways that we can solve such a problem. So if we had the case of two-dimensional heat transfer, how do we handle it? How do we model it? Well, figure 4.1 in your book shows the isotherms for such a case, along which the temperature is constant. So if this temperature, if this were one-dimensional, the isotherms would be vertical, such that the Q vector would be going in the horizontal direction along the x-axis. But here, we have isotherms that are not exactly horizontal or vertical. The direction of heat transfer is normal or perpendicular to the isotherm anywhere that you look in the body. And once again, we'll have heat, a heat transfer component in the x and y direction, such that the sum of those two will be the heat transfer in vector notation with the i and the j being the unit vectors in the x and y direction. We apply the heat conduction equation, and we assume that the material is isotropic. Steady state conditions have been reached. There's no heat generation, and we don't have heat transfer in the, in the z direction. So how can we solve this? Um, <clears throat> well, we're going to talk about several ways that we can handle the problem. We can solve the problem analytically, which we'll talk about in video 4.2. We'll use separation of variables, which you may remember uh, from your differential equations class, uh, to get an exact solution for the temperature distribution. This means that we'll be able to solve for the temperature at any location at all in the medium. But it's complicated. Um, We'll end up with a complex with complex looking solutions in series form. It's ugly. Um, and it's only possible to solve for simple geometries and boundary conditions. Uh, we won't do too much of it in this class. It's more something that you would work with a lot on the graduate level, but it's important to be aware of and have an understanding of. Uh, then we'll move on to shape factors. Uh, these are super simple to use. Uh, essentially, it's if there is some common type of system or configuration, someone else has probably already solved for how to calculate for the heat transfer rate, which is related to the shape factor, the thermal conductivity of the body, um, and the temperature difference between the boundaries of the body. It won't really allow you to get the temperature distribution, but it's really handy as a quick and dirty way of finding out some parameters of interest for common configurations. So once again, you can use shape factors for common configurations, uh, and not all, com not all configurations have a nice, pretty shape factor tabulated for you. Um, so, the bulk of our time in chapter four will be on finite difference methods. Um, so what we do is we divide the body into nodes and create a mesh. We'll get a set of n equations with n unknowns where the unknowns are the temperatures at discrete locations in the medium and we'll solve for those unknowns. Um, it's also good, uh, it's good for solving for the temperature at those particular locations or at those nodes. Um, this is unlike the analytical method, which would allow us to get the temperature at any location. But as long as our mesh is subdivided enough and we have enough nodes, i.e. those nodes are close enough together, it'll be sufficient for our needs. Um, we will have to have some numerical technique, of course, to solve those systems of equations, and there are multiple ways you can do this. We'll use the um, guy -Seidel, seidel method, which is covered in Appendix D of your book. So, um, well, there you go. That's our roadmap for the chapter, of, chapter ahead. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.